I am Ronald Reagan speaking for General Electric. Tonight, George Montgomery makes his dramatic TV debut in a romantic story, The Return of Gentleman Jim, with our special guest, the great Joe Lewis, on the General Electric Theater. In research, in engineering, in manufacturing skills, at General Electric, progress is our most important product. The time is June 22nd, 1937. A new heavyweight champion of the world was crowned, Joe Lewis. And that night began an era unparalleled in boxing history. For over 10 years, there wasn't a man living could hold a candle to Joe Lewis in the prize ring. Of course, that didn't prevent the boys in the fight game from getting into arguments. I tell you, Joe Lewis couldn't have lasted two rounds against some of them old timers. You better tell your boy to keep his left up, he'll get killed. You take John L. Sullivan or Jim Corbett, they'd have cut Lewis to pieces. Lewis the bomber? Are you crazy? They had the left hand in them days, Max. Oh. Corbett had a left. Yeah, what's the matter with Lewis? He didn't have a left. Bong, bong, right in the face all the time. Yeah, they were real tough in them days. Lewis wouldn't have had a prayer. Oh, yeah? Well, is that so? I got a five says you're out of your head. Now, come on, put up or shut up. Now, how am I going to book the fight? I ain't got no contract with Corbett. <laughs> He's dead. Oh, <laughs> uh, you, you get me excited all the time, all the time. <laughs> well, that's the argument that's been going on down through the years. Our story tonight is about one day in 1947, when gentleman Jim Corbett came back to Earth as a young man to settle the argument once and for all. Gentleman Jim Corbett, the classic boxer of his time. A man who could dodge any kind of a punch inside the ropes, but outside found romance a hard thing to avoid. Hey, Mike, get a load of the goofball. <laughs> Some kind of actor. It's all we get up here nowadays, a bunch of crazy actors. Rehearsing for television. Yeah, dig the crazy suit. <laughs> you better tell Frenchy his boy's a sucker for a left hook. Frenchy's crazy, you tell him. Well, you listen better to you. You're the champ. <laughs> Hi, good day, sir. How are you? Now, I don't want to bother you, but I've been told you're the famous fight promoter, Mike Dugan. Hey, uh, what kind of part are you made up for? I'm a boxer, sir. You must remember me, James J. Corbett, Gentleman Jim. <laughs> hey, that's pretty cute, but what's the gag? Well, sir, I'd like to arrange a go between myself and you or Mr. Lewis. You mean Joe Lewis? Aye, sir. <laughs> now, come on, now, what is it? Who sent you? Well, now, if you'll just Look, listen, I can tell you... no matter who sent you, tell him to take back the monkey suit and you win it. Now, Flo, uh, will you? I'm busy. And the next time... That Frenchie is crazy. He says it's good for his boy to get hit and learns him how to take it. Where'd he go? Who? Frenchie? Well, he was... No, standing... no, the, the, the actor, the guy in the monkey suit. Oh, yeah, he must have left. Who needs him? Send down and get me a salami sandwich. No pickles. I, I think I've been eating too many pickles lately. You got heartburn? I got something. Max! Maxie! Hey, how, how'd you get in here? 
I, it was a bit presumptuous of me, but I thought I'd find my picture in here. Remarkable likeness, don't you think? <clears throat> now, that was taken right after I knocked out John L. for the World Heavyweight Championship. Could be a good makeup job. I, I once saw an actor at the manager's guild banquet. Looked just like John L. Sullivan, only he was an actor. That's all he was, an actor. Now, Mr. Dugan, I certainly thought my picture would convince you. I certainly so, did. So what? So, so you look like Corbett. That's all. It's just good casting. I, I couldn't remember if, if you said salami or pastrami. Max, huh, huh. take a look at that picture. Was well, it's, it's just a picture. I seen an actor once at a Manzer's Guild bank that looked just like, uh, uh, no. It was nothing. It was nothing. <laughs> Come on, Maxie, put him up. Put him up. Hey, get a load of him. <laughs> and I'll take it easy. You'll get hurt, sir. Come, Maxie. You'll get Come hurt. Maxie. Now, look. Knock off. You're mussing my hair. Come now, at me. Now, look. I said knock off. <laughs> oh, oh. Now, look, you're going to get hurt. Come at me. Oh, 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 oh! Now, now, you're gonna get hurt, I said. Oh, 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 hold it, hold oh. it a minute, will you? What are you doing? You, oh. You're wasting a million bucks worth of action in here? Oh, hi. Oh. A bit weak on fundamentals. But I'm a fine prospect. Prospect? I was the I... champ. Fundamentals. In my day, we were all so well grounded in fundamentals. I just can't understand that. Well, sir, didn't I convince you? There was only one other fighter in the whole world that, that could use a left hand like that. Miss, Mr. Corbett, I, I'm, I'm delighted to make your acquaintance. And I'm delighted to make yours, sir. No, it's impossible. <laughs> if I didn't know you better, Mike, you know, uh, they, they look alike okay, but if I didn't know the gentleman Jim's been dead over 15 years... Tell me the truth. I'm not stupid. I know you're not gentleman Jim. Are you? I still don't know how you talked me into this. It, it's crazy, I tell you. It's Mr. Corbett. Why don't you go back to where you came from and leave me in peace? All, all my life, I worked hard. I, I put on big fights for big crowds. I, I make a nice little living. So what am I doing? Promoting a fight between Joe Lewis and, and a guy that was champ over 60 years ago? A guy that's been dead for over 15 years? I can, I can see it in every front page of every paper in the country. That they'll murder me, I tell you. Honest Mike Dugan selling tickets for, for 50 bucks a copy to, to see a fight between Joe Lewis and a sparring with a ghost. Now, Mr. Mike, hadn't we agreed that the general public was not to know about this? Yeah, he did say something. Aye, and you agreed to it. Now, the whole purpose of this fight, Mr. Dugan, is to prove once and for all whether we old-timers were superior to your modern-day fighters. Naturally, a boxing enthusiast such as yourself must look forward to such an experiment. Yeah, so naturally, I'm looking forward to it, but, but I still can't help but, but think there's a, there's a million dollar gate here, Mr. Corbett. The moment financial benefit enters the picture, Mr. Dugan, I must exit. I have absolutely no choice in the matter. And I did explain the restrictions. Yes, I know you explained it. No, no money, no women. I... You have your fight and you, you head right back to where you came from, up uh, there. Uh, that's right. But I, but I still can't help thinking it may be a return bout, say, on a... On a, on a closed television circuit? No. See, you mentioned something about that no women angle. Uh, how does that figure again? Ah, Mr. Dugan, those were the days. Why, in my day alone, in my day, you know, I was quite the lad with the ladies. Uh, you know, it was John L., Bob Fitzsimmons, Jack Johnson, and myself who drew straws to see which one of us was to make this trip. And now, mind you, the moment I won, my propensity with the fair sex was duly noted. A clause was inserted stating that should I become romantically involved with the young lady, 
The powers that be had the full right to terminate Miss Tay immediately. Well, you'll have no, no worry about women up where I'm taking you, up on the farm. Outside of my brother Frank, you don't have to worry about people either. All you've got to worry about is, is getting in shape for Lewis. Well, I don't know. I, I must be flipping my stack. Here I, I'm promoting a fight for a, a million dollar fight yet for a bunch of cows and chickens. <laughs> Pick it over. Now you had no right to bring Frank, over. you're gonna get 75 bucks a week just for boarding the two of them. But I told you it's not a question of money. Oh, Frank, why do you argue with me? Why do this for your brother? Why pick on me? There's a lot of other training farms. Well, this boy of mine is a hot prospect, don't you understand? I, I gotta keep him undercover. You know, Ruthie's home now. I hope this boy's a gentleman. <laughs> Are you kidding? Gentleman's his name. But, but don't you worry about it. Say, uh, how is little Ruthie? Little Ruthie? You should visit us more often, Mike. Hey, Frank, then it's okay, yeah? Well, you're here, aren't you? <laughs> okay, boys, unpack. Come on in, we're home. Let's have some coffee. Hey, this place looks real nice since I've seen it last, Frank. Looks real classy. So, uh, Max, you remember my brother, Frank? Oh, yeah, yeah. How are you? Uh, good to see you. <laughs> and uh, this is my new boy, Gentleman Jim Car Carver. It's a pleasure, sir, a real pleasure. Gentleman Jim. Aye, sir. Well, that name sounds familiar. You know, uh, I'm not a bug on the subject, but since we got this TV hey, set, I... Don't tell me you've become a fight fan. Oh, I watch it now and then. <laughs> <laughs> Say, haven't I seen you on television? No, I'm afraid not, sir. In my day, yeah, when we were... you see, this is his uh, first big fight, Frank. His first big fight? And he's fighting Joe Lewis in my barn? <laughs> well, it's more of an exhibition, you know, you know what I mean? Oh. But don't you worry about it. But, uh... One thing's very important, Frank. Nobody has got to know about this. Dad, did somebody stop by for a visit? Oh, come on downstairs, Ruthie. See who's here. Uncle Mike? This is little Ruthie? Oh, Uncle Mike, it's so good <laughs> well, to see sweetheart. you. Sweetheart. <laughs> what a young lady. <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> No. You have just seen Act One of The Return of Gentleman Jim, starring George Montgomery. Just recently, General Electric scientists at the General Electric Research Laboratory made a discovery that could be one of the really notable scientific events of recent years. And here is our General Electric Progress reporter, Don Herbert, to tell us about it. Good evening. This one is me because this is a mirror, and a mirror reflects back almost as much light as it receives. Certainly it doesn't increase the amount of light. Yet for some time now, scientists have wondered if it wouldn't be possible to make a surface that would reflect back more light than it received. Well, now for the first time, scientists at the General Electric Research Laboratory have discovered a way to amplify light directly on a surface. Here, I'll show you. Ultraviolet light from this ordinary slide projector throws a weak image on this phosphor screen. Here, I'll turn on the light so you can see it better. Now, I'm going to turn on the screen, sending an electric current through it. We're now getting back about 10 times as much light as is actually hitting the screen. And notice that we didn't increase the amount of light coming from the projector, but strengthened or amplified the weak image that was on the screen and retained all the detail and contrast in the picture. Now the current that went through the screen actually turns into light, making the picture brighter. Here, let's try that again. Now watch. A discovery like this could bring many changes to science and industry, as this gentleman over here can tell us. Here's Dr. C.G. Suits. How are you, Dr. Suits? Hold on. Dr. Suits is director of the General Electric Research Laboratory and a vice president of General Electric. Dr. Suits, how will this new method of light amplification be used? Well, Don, there are many possibilities. And among the first that comes to mind is future television receivers. You know, of course, that in the excellent TV sets we have today, this picture tube occupies the lion's share of the volume. Oh, it certainly does. 
Now, the light amplifying process we have just seen represents one of the important first steps leading to a flat picture tube, which would eliminate much bulky equipment. Some of our set designers think that future TV screens might look like this. Well, it certainly is thin. And a screen like this could be hung on the wall like a picture. Yes, Don, as you can readily see, a set like this would be much less bulky and much more compact than the sets we have today. And it could be formed as a flat screen by means of light amplification. It'll be some time before these projects become realities. We're still trying to learn all of the scientific facts about light amplification. But we can say this. It is on the foundation of new scientific discoveries such as this that industry builds new technology that leads to new products, to new employment, and to new growth for America. Thank you, Dr. Suits, for giving us another reason why we call the General Electric Research Laboratory a birthplace of progress. And why we say, at General Electric, progress is our most important product. Now back to Act Two of The Return of Gentleman Jim, starring George Montgomery with Marilyn Erskine and Jesse White. Come on, let's go skip roll. Go ahead, Maxie. I'll catch up with you later. Hi, Jim. Hello, Ruth. I don't want to say nothing, but I thought he ain't supposed to even look at a girl, Eva. Don't worry about it, will you? Yeah, yeah, but didn't he say the rule was no girls? Look, will you stop acting like an old lady? I, I got enough troubles without you. It's funny, I, I touch you all the time. I, I can't touch you enough. And yet, I, I don't think I touch you at all. Oh, but you do, Ruthie. More than I could ever tell you. Oh, try. Tell me. Oh, Ruthie. I, I can't. I just simply can't. I don't care what you say. These past two weeks, them two has been acting like a, uh, uh, item. Ah, uh, you're out of your mind. They're, they're just good friends, that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, don't you think we ought to tell her who he is? You know, the more I think of it, I should have ne never let you take that last fight. Why? Because you got rocks in your head, that's why. What are you going to tell her, that, that he's from heaven? <laughs> She'll laugh right in your face. I don't know. Don't seem right. Don't seem right no how. You were leaving as soon as the fight ended. Aye, that's right. But you'll come back sooner or later. No, Ruthie, I'm afraid not. No. Ruthie, I shall not come back. Never. Well, then, uh, I guess this is... Goodbye? Aye, I, I fear it is. Ruthie. Nice lying a young lady like yourself. You, you must have someone special, some nice someone young I'd chap. Someone I've met before you. I? You'd feel better if I did, wouldn't you? Well, no, I don't know if I would. Well, I'm not going to make you feel better. There's no one. Oh, well, there were <laughs> lots of fellas. Oh? But there's no one. Ah, that's a shame. That's a terrible shame. A girl like you, Ruthie. Jim, tell me just one thing and give me a straight answer, will you? I'll try, Ruthie. I owe her that much. Why can't you be that someone? Oh, I, I know there's a reason, but I have to know what it is. Sometimes, sometimes I feel you love me, and well, sometimes... Are you afraid of love? Is that it? Uh, well, maybe it is. I'm just a bit frightened, just a bit... Of me? No, no, not of you, Ruthie. It's, it's of loving you. 
Anything could ever happen between well, us. Is Who's there the someone else? No, no, that's not it exactly. Then what? Just... Oh, please tell me. If you love me, please tell me what's keeping us apart. Well, Ruthie, I... Uh, no. No, fellas, well, I... I guess it's getting late, and you have that fight to man. I... Ruthie, please believe one thing, will you? I want to kiss you more than anything in this... Than anything in this whole wide world, I want to kiss you, Ruthie. Please believe me. I can't. I just can't. I... Ruthie! Everything's all set, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what about the camera? Never mind about that. I'll take it. Uh. Joe Lewis. Glad to see you, Joe. Um, how you feel, Mike? Wonderful, Joe. Hi, Wonderful. Hi, Joe. Hey, Hi. have you introduced Joe to the gentleman yet? Well, not yet. To tell you the truth, uh, Mr. Mike, uh, Jim's acting kind of funny. Well, it's probably his nerves. He's he's keyed to a yeah. fighting pitch. Yeah. That's all it is, nerves. Uh, I'll bet you're anxious to meet him, huh? I'd love to. Yeah, yeah, come love on. To. Say, Jim. Say hello to Joe Lewis. I've been looking forward to this. Glad to see you, Mr. Carvin. Good to see you, too, Mr. Lewis. All of us up here feel you've done the boxing world a world of good. You've been a gentleman and a champion all the way. Coming from you is a real compliment. By the way, there's a chap from up my way who sends his best. Who was that? John L. John L. Sullivan said that he wishes he had your common sense when he was fighting. You know, that's half the battle. Oh, I'd like to talk to John L. someday. I... I'm not on her right away. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck to you, sir. Thank you very much. I won't wish you good luck tonight. Well, from what I hear about you, Mr. Lewis, I'm sure I'll have to need it. <laughs> what a boy. Jim, you're looking great. Max, you tells me you're, you're sharp as a razor. I... Well, I, I've got to take care of a few things. I'll see you in a few minutes. Right, Mike. Right. Right. Now, stay with him, you understand? I don't want nobody in there until we're ready to go. You got me? Yeah, yeah, but what about the camera? Yeah, I'm gonna check on it right now. What well, do you think you should? I mean, uh, Jim said that you, uh, he said... Jim says uh, no TV, no selling seats. You understand? Now, even Jim would agree that there should be some kind of a film record. Otherwise, who'd believe it, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, I want you to go in there and work on his legs, because he's all tensed up. You got me? And remember what I told you. I don't want none of that sports mob in there with him. All right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Tell me where the Come here. Who's he gonna work with? Keep working, keep working. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, nobody can come in. I have to see him. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Dugan, you can't come oh, in. I just had to come, Jim. I, I had to. Uh, I had to wish you good luck. I, I couldn't let you go away without... without... <laughs> oh, Ruthie. <laughs> just a few minutes, Maxie, please. Oh, oh, yeah, but you got me in a ring in five, five, five minutes. Hi, hi, Maxie. I'll take two. <laughs> All right. Ruthie, you shouldn't have come. Oh, Jim, darling, I love you. Oh, Ruthie. 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 58, 59. That's one minute. One, two. What are you doing out here? I thought I thought I told you to stay with him. Yeah, but I had to give him two minutes to say goodbye to Ruth Day. Tonight. <laughs> Where'd he go? What happened? Yeah, what happened? Thank you. 
There was a camera. They must have seen it from up there. I told you you couldn't hide it from them. I just thought uh, a little film record. I wasn't going to sell it, fellas. Uh, honest, I wasn't. Hey, Mr. Dugan. Mr. Dugan. Oh, way. The you? film. The film's gone. What do you mean, gone? I just saw it a minute ago. It's gone, I tell you. One second the camera's loaded, and the next, maybe it fell on the floor. Ruthie, honey, will you explain it to your Uncle Mike? What, what happened? Yeah, yeah, what happened? He kissed me. He took me in his arms, told me who he was, told me he loved me, and then he kissed me. And when his lips touched mine, he was gone. What a dope I've been. I should have listened to you, Max. Yeah. He said no dames, remember? Uh -huh. No girls. Uh -huh. The film he could have handled. But you, you little Ruthie, you I, I didn't figure on. Well, I still say Corbett could have taken a bomber. Any guy that's so much of a gentleman, he wouldn't leave his girl without a goodbye kiss. If Corbett would have taken him. Yeah, is that so? Well, I say you're wrong, and I gotta finish as a joke. Could have took him any time, all the time. Could have. But I guess I don't never get to prove it no more now. Don't never get to prove it. I don't know. He might. He might come back someday. Yeah, he might. He might. <laughs> So the argument still goes on. Perhaps it's better that way. This is one quarrel that's too much fun to end. Personally, I like to think it would have been a draw myself. I'm sure you agree with me that Joe Lewis is every bit a champion. And I think you'll also agree that Gentleman Joe Lewis will enjoy the same immortality as Gentleman Jim Corbett. Our thanks to George Montgomery for making his television debut on our program. In the weeks to come, we're going to have some other firsts for you. We'll have Fred McMurray, Myrna Loy, Cornell Wilde, Henry Fonda, and Jimmy Stewart. And speaking of firsts, for the past 18 weeks, there has been another first, Mr. Irving Stone's novel, Love is Eternal. It has been the number one bestseller of the nation. And next Sunday, we are going to do a dramatic story from Mr. Stone's great book. We hope that you will be around when we star Miss Teresa Wright in our version of Love is Eternal. This will be next Sunday at this very same time, and we think that it's going to be one of the truly outstanding shows on our entire series. Until next week, then, good night for General Electric. In the home, on the farm, in the factory, on land, on sea, in the air, at General Electric, progress is our most important product.